I grew up in Kalihi, but Waikiki, Ala Moana, those were my stomping grounds, all the way to the airport, Sand Island. My dad would drive us out there once in a while at the age of 10. The old road, Kunia, you know, Farrington Highway, Cam Highway, going out to the North Shore. The ride with the big Chevy 55 pitch in dollar, always with the, the older guys, yeah, down at Waikiki or Sand Island, the brothers used to take us, throw the board in the trunk. So at 11, 12, 13, we were going. But yeah, that, that kind of always stayed with me, the North Shore, you know, with the single fins, no leash. And when we went with the, with the elders, the, the older boys, oh, it was pure pressure. It was like, if you don't paddle out, you're gonna catch the bus home or you're gonna hitchhike home. When you're going out there, you have to surf. You know, you pull up to Haleiwa and Lonnie's, you're just squeezing, you know. It's not gonna be too big. It's like, dang, I gotta paddle out. You know, when you talk about Tony Moniz, it's what Tony Moniz, you know. Tony Moniz is a golden glove boxer, I mean, unreal motocross rider, you know, as well as a great waterman and surfer also too. You know, he excels in, in everything that he puts his mind to. The first time I met him, Locomotion, at that time Larry Bergman and Buttons would, were riding for Locomotion. I was working for Locomotion. So this one day I was working behind the desk and um, someone came in the front door and just kind of started reading magazines, surfing magazines. And I just was like, I tapped my uh, manager, John. I'm like, hey, John, who's that guy over there? He's like, oh, that's Tony Moniz. I was like, first thing I thought was, oh, Tony and Tammy Moniz. Ring. <laughs> and the uh, rest is history. Kids growing up surfing, it wasn't anything planned. It was real natural. They played with soft tops, long boards, any board, boogie board. They just played in the ocean. What are you doing, Seth? Are you having fun? Yeah, yeah. Sweet dad, you could say, you know, he was never too aggressive with us or anything, never pushed us to do anything we didn't want to do. Yeah, my mom was more strict. I used to go to my dad, like, he was a little softer than my mom, so I'd, when I had to ask him for favors or stuff, I'd go to him, I guess, instead. He never focused about surfing, and surfing wasn't his focus. It wasn't about making us, like, the best surfers in the world, or, and it was never a pressure of, like, you have to be the best to get there, or you have to do this in order to be the best. It was just like, girl, as long as you're having fun, you are the best. As long as you love what you do, you are the best, and there's no one that can take that away from you. So it was always about the love of the ocean and to respect the ocean and to enjoy a time at the beach with my family, really. We all did school on the beach and it was kind of fun. Like, I think families would just be like kind of baffled. Like, oh, we have school books? They're down here every day doing school and surfing all day. And that's what we did. Like my dad and mom were working and they just like set a little table up for us. Growing up, we shared boards. I always had hand-me-downs, Seth had hand-me-downs. We all did. Being in Waikiki, it's all small, so we're always like on longboards because it's small and it's fun. And then we slowly started like not getting bored, but wanted to move up to shortboards because we like watch the older guys. You know, you're watching all these movies, surf movies, and kind of want to do that kind of stuff. But the turning point was probably surfing Kiwalos, from surfing Waikiki our whole lives to going to Kiwalos because that was a big change. You know, it's a reef break, and for at that time it was scary. It was a scary way for me. Yeah, the way I approached surfing, I think, when I was young is I just pretty much did whatever Josh or Isaiah or Micah did. It's good to see Josh um, excelling in, in a surfing world. He could show up anywhere in the world and he's a threat. Waves would be like, he can show up Japan. Waves this big, 
punting over everyone, doing airs over everyone. He'll show up to one man, drop in on the biggest one ever. I know if it comes his way, he's gonna go. It's got his blood. Mason Ho would always comment on my uh, my mom's photos. She she he started commenting on my mom's photos. Uh, heavy sack Seth. <laughs> heavy sack Seth. The heaviest sack around the south or the north or the east, possibly the west. He's not afraid to go over the, the edge. <laughs> he's really like turned on his strengths this year in my eyes because he's always been one of my favorite surfers personally like local Hawaiian boy like good looking Hawaiian boy you know doing actually surfing all proper yeah it's incredible to watch the boys and sister become what they've become sister was always a good short border as well as long border and and to see her actually take her competition to win the world title twice was amazing, you know. She's very gifted, very natural, very graceful. Micah Moniz has turned into such a gifted athlete, you know. That's probably the biggest boy I've ever seen fly an alley-oop before, and Isaiah is strong as anybody, and he's actually almost superhuman strong. Uh, you know, don't get him angry. <laughs> Being with Micah and Isaiah, it was full big brother style. They'd always have my back and just kind of thought I was like some quirky, funny kid, I don't know. But uh, yeah, whenever we surfed together, it was like, yeah, Micah, like, what up? It's getting psyched, no, no. <laughs> but yeah, they're just like so humble and loving that you just feel comfortable around them. I mean, what can I say, you know? the. Tammy and Tony, they, they, they breed them good. You know, all boys, they all rip. They got one girl, she's pretty, and she rips. It's, it's just a privilege to watch them grow up and grow into the, the adults they're becoming or are and following in their dad's footsteps. Um, you know, I, when I think about our life, like um, I, I honestly sometimes think, I don't know how we did it. I think like every parent, you kind of just have to do, you know, what, what you have to do to survive, to make the best out of your life. Sometimes it's hard, sometimes it's great. You know, of course on Instagram, we post the good parts, we're not gonna post the bad parts. But there are a lot of bad parts as well, you know, as um, any family would struggle. And one day, you're, as a parent, you're gonna look back and go, wow, we made it, or wow, I don't know how we made it. You know. The Muniz family is really about um, fun, family, friendship, culture, all that sold into one family. You know, setting a standard and a bar for the surfing community in Hawaii and the world as being a family and a unit and being humble and respectful and God-fearing. And it's showing in their lives and everybody around them. And now it's the most important thing for me is that they enjoy surfing before anything else. And even till, till today or when they started to want to do like the Minihuni events and, you know, and then the Hasas came and NSSA came in, I've always instilled in them, look, I'll support you, we'll do these events, but you got to remember when I pass, I can leave you the house, you know, hopefully get some money to leave you, whatever, you know what I'm saying? But I want you to remember me when you're in the ocean. That's one thing that I can give to you. So don't let the competition competitive side ruin that for your life. The ocean is your playground. The ocean is where you're gonna get your fish. It's your life. It's part of Hawaii. It's Hawaiian. Hawaiian.